Tonight on What It's Like, we meet with the owner of a store that resells one of the hottest brands in streetwear culture, Supreme. Started in 1994 by James Jebbia in New York City, it grew to be loved by millions of people and even celebrities who wear some of the products. In fact, it was rumored that last year Louis Vuitton offered Jebbia $500 million to buy the brand, to which he said no. This brings us to Michael Neary, owner of the biggest Supreme exclusive resale store in all of America, who agreed to sit down with me and answer some questions about what it's like owning a Supreme store. So let's just kind of start from the beginning. No one's really done what you've been able to do in like the Supreme game as far as like opening a store that's dedicated to reselling Supreme, that's done really, really well, has everything. We'll get into like the crazy clientele and stuff like that that you have later. But let's just kind of start with like, how did you even think of this idea? Well, after I got my first Supreme piece, when I was in school, I just didn't feel like I wanted to be there, you know? So it's not like I got bad grades or anything, but I just felt like I wanted to do more. So at the time, I'd say around, what was it, 20, end of 2012, beginning of 2013, I started thinking about how I could get out of high school. So I took this test, summer 2013, and if you pass the test, you get your high school diploma. So I passed the test. And after that, um, it was either I invest in sneakers or Supreme, you know? At the time, I was rocking a lot of sneakers. I had just got Yeezy 2s. The Platinum sold them, regrettably. After I passed that test, got my diploma in the mail, I started thinking about whether or not to invest in sneakers or Supreme, so I thought of just investing in the Supreme because that was something not many people were doing at the time. There were a few, like, uh, for sure, Riff, Round 2 had been open, uh, Blitz had been open, so I drew a lot of inspiration from them as well. Like, I met Jeff from Riff, early on, like 2011. I met Dre around that time too, and they were the ones who kind of like led me to believe that I can actually do something out of that, you know? So much love to them. And Sean too from round two, I met him like right before we moved out to Vegas, probably like a year before, but yeah. Okay, so a lot of people that watch my channel as well as my second channel, Blake Wynn, where I talk a lot about the business side of it, everyone's just starting out, it seems like. I mean, there's the people that are more established and have been consistent resellers and stuff like that, but how do you get to a point where you have as much inventory as you have? How do you accumulate it all? Like, kind of talk about what you had to go through to get there. Well, one thing that I feel like a lot of, especially collectors on Instagram that are trying to open stores and whatnot, I feel like with us, when we first started, because it's their same problem too, when we first started, we thought, you know, having all the expensive stuff was gonna have people come. You know, granted, it'll draw them, but you're not going to be making a lot of money off of that. So I think that's definitely a problem that a lot of the new people are having. They're trying to either get too much of the old stuff and they can't sell it because it's too expensive. Not everybody can afford it, you know, or they just have all the new stuff for overpriced. It's one or the other. It always is. You know, we get customers saying other stores like smaller stores they've been to. It's either the new stuff that's overpriced or it's all the old stuff, which is already overpriced. Right. So. so when you were getting a lot of your Supreme stuff, in addition to probably getting it on consignment or getting it from other people, did you ever camp out? Oh yeah, definitely. First, uh, I'd camped out for sneakers before, definitely. I camped out for Concords, some raffles. Um, but yeah, first Supreme drop that I actually waited like a long time for was spring, summer 2014. You know, it wasn't as crazy as it is, as it is now, but I remember camping out um, that Wednesday yeah, Wednesday at like 6.30, was 6.30 p.m. is when I got there. And I didn't get into Supreme that following Thursday until like 8 p.m. And I didn't even get everything I wanted. And I, I was with uh, I was with two other people. One of them was my uncle's friend, had no idea what he was doing there. And he ended up getting in before me. So he did not know what to grab or anything. It was, it was just a bad situation. I remember being so stressed that day, but yeah, that was my first camp out. And then some like small, camp outs um like only where i wait like an hour or something it's not like you know i won't claim that actually i did fall winter 13 i think when the bling box logos came out i was able to just walk into the new york store and i walked out with a red hoodie 
I'm not gonna say like I was there since like 2011. You know, there's a, I know a lot of people who've been really camping out for like a minute. Okay, so now it's no secret that you sell to like a ton of celebrities. I've seen Travis, Chris Brown, Metro Boomin. Uh, I think you mentioned Nav before, like a lot of these guys. How do they find you to buy Supreme from you? And like, what are some of the things they've bought? I think the first celebrity that I actually started serving, it was a daily or regularly, at least it was Metro. Um, I met him through Bari, ASAP Bari, the owner of v -Loan. I uh, First, I met Bari at um, the first v -Loan pop up they did uh, in LA in like 2015 or 2016. That was when I met him. And then for New Year's Eve 2017, um, Bari was out here with everybody. Metro was here, Gunner was here. Um, so yeah, Bari came to the store. Um, he wanted to buy a few things, but uh, I don't think he had the cash on him. So he asked me to just deliver it to his hotel room. So they were staying at uh, Mandalay Bay. I go to their room. Um, just Bari, Bari, and I think Nash was there too. But I was serving Bari, he bought a V, not V one. He bought the Black Sabbath uh, denim jacket uh, that Supreme did, and then some camo coveralls. He actually broke one of the pairs, like the zipper, like messed up on one of them. So I had to give him another pair that thankfully we had in his size. And then he told me to bring stuff from Metro, and Metro comes down from his really nice room. Um, so he comes down, I show him some stuff, uh, he didn't have the money either, so we had to go up to his room, and, uh, he had the best possible view of the strip for New Year's Eve, it was cool. He ended up buying a black North Face Paisley jacket, and, um, the North Face Paisley gloves, I think those were the first two things he bought off of me, but after that, um, I got his number, sent him a few of the pictures I took of him, and then Gunner, his photographer, was uh, the one who brought him to the store. I think it was like a few months later, maybe around this time last year, actually. He brought Metro to the store, Metro liked it. And then from there, uh, every time he came to Vegas, since he has a residency at Light, uh, every time he comes, he'd just be hitting me up for new clothes, new clothes, new clothes. You know, I uh, styled him for that. Uh, it was day and night, he was wearing the Supreme uh, Predator t-shirt, the Ice Cube album. That one, that picture got everywhere. And then he wore the Supreme Nike varsity jacket that I sold him uh, for the Brooklyn store opening. And he wore that to yeah, some Nike event, which is cool. Other people, yeah, I met Nav. Travis came a few times. Every time Travis comes, he's like a little, a little strange, but he's cool. Um, Nav's cool. I actually have to deliver him some stuff uh, All-Star Weekend uh, this coming weekend. So I have to deliver some stuff to his house. Chris Brown too, I served him a few times. Um, they're all cool. I mean, being in that crowd is uh, definitely a little intimidating when you're new to, when you're new to it, you know, you don't know how to act because low key I'm like fans of these people. Like Chris Brown, for sure, for sure Chris Brown. And then uh, Travis, Metro, everybody. But one thing that I notice celebs like, when you don't treat them like they're celebs, you know, they act a little cooler around you. 100%. Know? Yeah, because I remember um, the homies, I wanted to record some footage, kind of show like what I do, you know? So we were delivering some clothes to Metro, and I just remember we walked into the room, uh, my homie was recording him, and then I asked Flea, <laughs> I asked Flea, his security guard, if it was cool if we recorded, but then Metro was like, nah, just don't record right now, blah, 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 so. All right, so I only got two more questions, but these are, it is something that might be kind of hard to answer, because I, I it's tough, I don't even know the answer, that's why, that's why we're asking you. So basically, what do you think makes Supreme Supreme? Like, what is it about putting the word Supreme right here that makes something worth $1,100? Because the last time we made a video, everyone in the comment section was like, this dude's probably got, you know, a million dollars or whatever in Supreme, but like, why would you spend that on it? Like, what to you make Supreme like worth that much money? Well, or I mean- to everybody, I mean, okay. that is the market. Well, know? let me, I'll do a little history lesson, like, Back in, let's say, 2013, 2012, when we started buying this stuff, like, sneakers were hot at the time. So, you know, you had, like, she was, like, these Red Supreme Blazers were going for around, like, you know, fifteen to 2000 for a brand new pair. So, like, that's when people were willing 
to spend all the money on shoes. So that's why I didn't want to invest in shoes at the time because it was already peaking, you know? Um, so I started going in on Supreme and at the time, you know, I was buying box logos for like 250 bucks, brand new. And I thought that was a lot. And it looked back, back in the day, it was a lot. So what I feel like made it a lot more popular was definitely just social media but it's just the buyers are the ones that are driving the market up, you know? You see you see Rice Gum, the pink box logo crew neck he was wearing, he got that from me. After, he he bought it at the time for like, I don't know, 700. You think he's the one who made that go up? I mean, him, Travis wore it. I mean, this just depends on the fan base, but yeah, those the more people see it, the more popular it gets, the price goes up. So that same $700 sweater turned into a $2,000 sweater you know, just for a few people wearing it. And I'd say what makes Supreme Supreme, just they're the one, they're the only ones who did it right. Like they stayed true to their core as far as um, skate culture. And regardless of their fan base, you know, as it gets bigger, obviously a lot more people are watching it, watching the brand, but they always stayed true to their like skater core, you know, they never, went like mainstream but they still do off the wall collabs you know like a pinball machine like who expected that yeah you know so they do that's definitely one reason why and um they just they i don't think they ever sold out like they always had a a chance to you know sell out and do what a lot of other brands do carry themselves in boutiques like you know dover street or um neiman markets those types of stores they could have easily had Supreme in any of those shops, but they didn't. I think, actually they did do Dover Street. Only Dover Street New York has it for retail. They just always stay true. That's why I think it's maintained popularity. It's been a slow grind for them and uh, now it's definitely paying off. All right, so last question. The video is kind of based around this. Everyone wants to know, that's why they clicked on it. It's kind of the, it's the title of this series, if you will. Uh, what is it like owning a Supreme store? It's cool. I'm definitely proud uh, that I did it in Vegas where everybody from around the world comes, you know. I, I'm actually from California, so if I opened it in LA or anywhere in California, you know, um, I'd be going up against a lot of my friends, I'm not trying to undercut people, step on toes, stuff like that. So opening it in Vegas, it's cool because you meet everybody from all over the world. I even met, um, you've been meeting people everywhere. Just, you wouldn't expect and all the celebs come here all the athletes come to vegas you know there's always every weekend i'd say even every day almost there's something new going on and it's only getting bigger it's definitely a risk though like coming out here not knowing anybody um just knowing that there was a void that needed to be filled with no supreme at all out here so um it took a while but thankfully we did it organically didn't let a we didn't force promote ourselves at all. We kind of just let people find out, um, you know, thanks to people like you who do videos on us and then uh, seeing the celebs post, stuff like that. Um, yeah, meeting all the people. Um, I don't even consider it a job either. It's just like, you know, I love this stuff. Every season, there's always new things that I want. And yeah, that's all it is. It's amazing owning a Supreme store.